Okay, so I'm just going to start this video because that's all there is left to do is just to start. I'm totally petrified to do this video because I don't think my life is together enough to do it. But I'm tired of living a life where I'm not enough so I can't just be free to be who I want to be around people and that is just really to love people and connect with them and show them how to be free by being totally falling apart. I recently went to a uh, seminar with uh, Kyle Cease, um, who has been doing transformational seminars recently. He's also a comedian, he's been in movies, and he's a joy to be around. And I've done a lot of seminars. I've done 10 day seminars. I've done them with the big gurus to read books about. I've even led parts of them with them. And people always ask me to talk to them about freedom and about authenticity. And I always have a like, I will, or maybe when everything in my life looks right, so I feel like I'm justified to be up there, like I've earned it. Well, I've earned it through all the work that I put in all over the years. I've been coaching people since I was 14 years old. It's just a natural thing for me. What isn't natural for me is to be okay coaching when my room's a mess, when my hair hasn't been trimmed in, I don't know, a year? Uh, when I haven't washed it in a while, when um, I have piles downstairs of projects I haven't finished, I told people I would, and so now I look like a flake. And so I went to the seminar not to learn to fix myself, because I'm done fixing myself. I don't actually think I'm broken. But what I know is that I listen to the voice in my head, like to an addictive level, where if it tells me not to go out for a week, I don't, because I'm not sorted out enough that people will love me including my siblings or um, people that I flake out on or whatever it is, I just shut off and I hide. And all the projects I have going that are brilliant projects, they sit there because I analyze them to death because I want you to like them. I don't want to do them for fun. I mean, I do. But if there's not a monetary value or a way that I think that you're going to like me, then I shut down and I don't do them and I analyze them to death. The best things that I've ever done in my life were things I had to do in about 30 seconds. If that meant someone called me from the White House and said, we need you to come talk to the president, I, had to, I would have no fear. I could do that. If you need a gift in 15 minutes and I've got a stick and a rubber band and a piece of gum and maybe a piece of paper, I could give you art. I can do that. I can do it when I don't think. So that's why I'm doing this video totally terrified. It's actually the first video I've ever done. And I've been hiding from it for a couple days. And about two months ago, I actually bought video equipment because I wanted to start doing service projects with people and videoing it and having fun doing that and kind of like a dirty job thing, but with service. And uh, I found that some of my family was going to move and things were changing and the, the dialogue I had in my head about how it was gonna go was gonna be gone and then it would just be me. And that was going to be very uh, vulnerable and just me standing there and that would got way too uncomfortable so uh I flaked out on that and that's what I really wanted to do or else I was just trying to come up with another way for it so then I started another plan which I love but when I was in this seminar I was sharing with people what my project was an art project that I wanted to do this new company I bought the website for it I did everything I needed to do to prepare for it and when I got there we were talking about Kyle asked, what is it that you would do for the rest of your life if it was for free? And I got so pissed because what it is is I would just love people. I would want to love every heart that was ever broken. And people that feel like the brain is just screaming at them that they can't live the life they want. They can't love the people they want. They can't leave a religion that they want. They can't join a religion they want. They just can't, can't, can't do what they love. And in this world when we say that we're fighting for freedom and we're fighting against injustice, it will never happen until we can say a true yes or no in ourselves. That's what it's going to take and that's what I am not able to do yet. But in the last three weeks, that has started happening for me. People that were doing really unkind things, I didn't sit and analyze it to like, wash, how did I create this mess? What did I do to them? I just need to keep being better and then they'll be better and it'll all work out. These are people I don't even necessarily care about.
but I just in my head I've felt responsible for everyone in my whole life. Maybe the oldest is seven, I don't know. So I let abusive people stay around. And I'm not even mad at them or judge them. That's just their place. But I finally could see that was theirs. <laughs> Sorry for the snot. It's going to come. So I could let them go. I didn't even have to reply. I could love them and just let them go. And I realized what they were doing had nothing to do with me, which was huge. Because then I was freed up there to move on to better areas that were good for me. And I didn't have to stay and just be the good person. So those honest yes and no's are critical. When I don't honor those, my body gets sick. It breaks down. And then guess what? Then I get embarrassed. I feel like a failure. And I see all these people on social media or whatever out there having a ball. And I I just, I feel embarrassed. Like my body hurts too much or I'm sick all the time. Or people always think I'm a flake. And yet I know what I'm capable of. I've proven it over and over in my life. And it's an odd place to get at 45 when you realize you have done extraordinary things that people take a whole life to do. Mine was crammed in a very short amount of time. And I think I kind of felt lost. Like, now what? I've done kind of the goals that everyone says to do. But yet I feel this emptiness. And that emptiness is wanting to love people unconditionally. But if I don't do it for myself, I can't do it for you. I'll sell you out. I'll run away from you because I sell myself out and I run away because I listen to the voice in my head that says you can't do it. And it doesn't say it to be me. It says it protect me because, you know, I'm looking at moving to California from Arizona. I'm in the middle of writing a book that I'll be delivering in 30 days. No, 90 days. Thank God. But I could probably pull off 30 days. It's, I can't think about it. And my mind is saying, if you go, your family won't love you the same. You will have broken up the connection with the cousins or um, what will we even do there? I don't have a plan for going there. I've just always wanted to go back there. And when I was back there for the seminar, that's all I wanted to do. And when I come from a place where my mind tries to figure it out, that's really the ego saying, you know, this would be good because you could get this, this, and this. Or people would be impressed because this, this, and this. But it doesn't cover my heart and the world doesn't revolve around your ego. But if you come from your soul and down in your body, which is where I feel this right now, and I couldn't do it if I was up here, or would be so planned and, you know, decorated. I don't even decorate my house. Who are you kidding? Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do it. I'd suffer and I'd probably never get there. But if I come from a place of my soul, down in my body, that's where my answers are. It's in my heart. And so moving is in my heart. And the book is in my heart. Several books are in my heart. I've been told to write books my whole life. And I'm like, I don't want to. I mean, I do, but I don't. I hadn't analyzed it enough. I hadn't figured it out enough. So I just started writing on a commitment that I would deliver a book. And will it be good? Yup. Because that's what I deliver when I don't think about it. So why I'm here is because what I crave for everybody is freedom. To walk outside and whatever you want to wear. To have a home that looks however it looks, but you can still invite people in because you're not scared. That if your body hurts, you can let someone come and love you in spite of that fact. Whatever it is, that you don't have to give up because you screwed up. I have screwed up royally over and over. Part of the fear of posting on Facebook. Well, some people know I'm a total ass. That's embarrassing. But I can't help people be free until I feel authentically free. So that is what I'm doing for the first time ever is I'm not trying to figure any of it out. I'm listening to my heart and my body and my brain is screaming. It is telling me not to do this. I've hid from this for two days. And the irony of all of it is Wonder Woman was my idol growing up. My first costume was Wonder Woman. It went bad. So maybe the rest of my life I've been trying to be Wonder Woman for real. But people buy me the gifts. I've got stuff over my house from her. My sister married a guy who was related to her. And that movie premieres today. And this is the first video I've made because I don't even like to look at myself in general. Uh, I mean, I've made some goofy Snapchats for my nieces and nephews. That's it. This is the first video I've ever made. So I'm making it so that I can love me unconditionally in the moment so that I can love you that way. And then maybe you'll say, I want that too. Me too. I feel scared. I don't want to make a video, but I do want to make a video. Or I do want to write a book or I do want to walk outside in my pajamas or I, whatever it is, or my brain screams all the time too, or I want to learn to live from my heart too, or I feel sick. And so I don't feel like I can feel loved either. It's all about me too. You know, they say that 
the three best words you can ever hear. Some people say it's I love you, and to me it's, yeah, me too. When someone says, do you ever feel totally insane? Yep, me too. It, there's just a relief there. There's a camaraderie of humans saying it's okay when we feel broken because when we feel vulnerable like that, it's the only way to let people in. And I'm, I love it when people are vulnerable. I just, I scoop them up. I just eat them up. That's when humanity is everything to me. But I don't, I don't get vulnerable with people. I just have this iron wall because I think if everything isn't on my shoulders and I don't carry everything, something's going to fall apart. So I just keep it like a wall. And then I make little snarky remarks here and there. And then when something big comes along that I don't have to think about, I shine. But mostly I live behind the wall. So here's to anyone that doesn't want to live behind their wall anymore. And I find it ironic that today is the day Wonder Woman premieres. And is the day that I'm posting my video. And I'm going to be posting one every day for 100 days. Even if I throw up on camera, it's getting posted. And then in 100 days, or maybe 120 days, I think, the book will be available. I'm not doing this because of the book. I'm doing this because I'm tired of fighting for a life that I don't really love. But I want to fight for everyone. And that has to start with me. So thank you and go see Wonder Woman and check out Kyle Cease even though I don't even like telling about him because he's like the best kept secret out there ah, there's only so many tickets anyway go see Wonder Woman and if you want come get outside of your wall with me because I'd like to meet you <laughs>